Apologies for chewing, but oh, banana. <laughs> I had a banana Kurt before you was done. As in the call. D K D K D K D K. Da 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 Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Doctor Who Reviews. This week we are looking at the David Tennant story, Planet of the Ood, as chosen by Freezing Inferno, and to discuss it, I have my two usual co-hosts with me. Firstly, to my virtual left, he paved paradise and put up a giant mirror, it's Freezing Inferno. <laughs> oh boy, yeah, uh, that's gonna be, uh, I mean... Solar power, hey, oh wait, no, it reflects the light. No, it does it wait. Uh, solar power That's... absorbs the light. It doesn't yes. reflect it. Well, it can reflect it onto the solar panel, hey! Solar well, power no, see, is you're of... both wrong, because the way that vision works is by objects reflecting light in different wavelengths. So, it is reflective. Science! It's like that, Science! It's like that giant magnifying glass in Springfield. <laughs> Yes, because we could take The Simpsons as the epitome of true science. A meme for everything. No, wait, that's SpongeBob. Uh, no, I think you could get a meme for everything on The Simpsons because it's been going for so long. I mean, it's been going on for like 30 something years, so yes. Eight of which were actually good. Real realistically, The Simpsons tells the future, The uh, SpongeBob tells the present. So, what does Futurama tell? <laughs> Nothing. It's the it right answer. It, it, um, it tells us that John DiMaggio should be paid more, is what it tells us. Well, that's just it, it tells us that the people who are on Futurama just are fucking geniuses. I mean, they managed to like create a whole different math problem. It's not even that um, John DiMaggio should be paid more, it's that the entire cast should be paid more. Yeah. That's right? the whole point of his protest. Right. I mean, at the very least, they're having a new season. Why? I don't know, but they are. Because nostalgia sells. Yeah. I'm not going to mention a certain movie franchise, considering what happened last week. <laughs> he he uh, had rest. some guys get it wrong, though, because did he direct this one? No, producer. He... So then it's fine. The, the late... Even so, it's just Ivan like, Reitman was just a producer, and he appeared as <clears throat> in the film as well. He was in? Huh? Just he because someone dies does not mean that you can't criticize what they do or have done. Yeah, he was the body double. Maybe. Horse. Sorry. <laughs> That's right. You're learning. Uh, but maybe, maybe you have a slight grace period. But the fact is, we didn't know at the time. It's now been a week. We could talk about how afterlife is shit. If if Ivan right if if. If his Wikipedia page is accurate, then Ivan Reitman was the uh, body double for Spoiler in that film. I see. Spoiler's my favorite character. Also, uh, rest, hey, in, also rest in peace, who, Ivan Reitman, my, and uh, condolences to his family. Speaking of favorite characters, who else is on this podcast? I'm, I'm glad you asked me. To my virtual right, pour us something tall and strong, make it a hurricane before she goes insane, it's Cat. Uh, number one, too late. Number two, it's not half past twelve, but I really don't fucking care because five o'clock somewhere. I mean, you would know about uh, hurricanes this week, huh, Rain? Oh God, yes. Yeah, you, you might be able to hear the wind howling outside my window, so we should really get on with this. Now, now you know how I feel half the time. <laughs> Terrified? Yes. Scared to go outside? Yes. Cool. I mean, just this week we had to deal with a. Uh, Gusts of like 110 kilometers an hour, so mm -hmm. right on, right on the front of my house. I'm High wind, head, so. driving rain, and then snow. <laughs> you guys remember where I moved to, right? And this is not me doxing myself because it's fine. <laughs> uh, but you remember where I moved to, right? Correct. Yes. I'm in the fucking desert. Here's what happened just last week. Oh wow! Jesus Christ. I mean, it there can... was a layer of ice under that snow, by the way. Yeah, it can, it can snow in the in the desert. Yeah, but I still didn't 
fucking expect it. So that was it's great. very unlikely. I was also like thirty minutes late to work or so. It doesn't help, so. does it? No. No. Hey, you know what else is a frozen over icy landscape? Uh, the planet of the Ood. Nice Big save. Wave. Nice save. Hey. Oh. So yeah, let's talk a little bit about this one because this is another one of those episodes that was moved out of rotation. Oh, go ahead. This was supposed to be Donna's first adventure after meeting up with the Doctor again. So this was meant to be episode two. Be. Right. Let me see. Let me see. Do, do, do. Makes sense considering the Davies era form. Oh no, Prez. They, they go to the pet. They go. They have an adventure in the present. Then they go to the future. Then they go to the future. we have a problem. Message. Oh, what kind of problem do we have? Furry Gold is in this one. Let's yeah. Doing That's the cool. music. Well, of course. It's, it, he did all of them for the first ten series. Yeah. L- l- listen, I-, I get to gush about anti-capitalist virtues in this story. It's only fair that Rain gets to gush about Murray Gold's composing. No, don't worry. I'm not going to gush about Murray Gold's composing too much. Oh, I get that, to gush about. Well, well, that's okay because I'm going to gush about that capitalist bullshit a lot. <laughs> I'm not going to gush about. What do particular... I get to gush about? Yes. Uh, um. <laughs> Colin Baker, when you inevitably pick him for next. Time. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, um, no, no, it wasn't. Oh god, I um, just remembered it is Cat's pit next. God damn it. <laughs> um, I'm gonna have to pick something else. Uh, anyways, uh, so we open up. On a commercial for the Ood. Your yeah. own personal slight, I mean, servants. Totally servants. It not came servants. from space across distant worlds to serve you tea. That's just how Sunu Miku. My God. I mean, she's, she's had a busy career. She's written the Harry Potter books. She beat Triple H and Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 20. What? Do you not know that, Joe? What? No. What? Any any time that Chris Benoit is in wrestling, they just replace him with Hatsu, him, him with Hatsune Miku. Oh, 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 God! Oh, fuck! Oh, fuck. Oh, Wait, what happened? Any time there's something oh. problematic or you don't want to remember, you just replace that person with Hatsune Miku. So Hatsune Miku well, no, won't wrestle. Yes, I know that. <laughs> I I know that, but who are we replacing with Hatsune Miku? This Chris time? Benoit. Who? I'll tell you later. Okay. Yeah. If you know who Chris Benoit so. is, you know there's a reason why he's replaced in everything. Awkward color tug. Oh, also, can I just say, uh, going back to the episode, um, uh, well, the Ood are not human. Fine, whatever. I'm still gonna go by human standards for this. Um, if you buy and sell people, even with their quote unquote, as we'll learn later, is not true, willingness to be bought and sold, that's still trafficking of living creatures that's Absolutely. not that that that, that, that that's still wrong these we aren't can see that, of course, robot servants that the you people can just buy. of the 42nd century can't see that which is stupid because i mean they well, have like all these centuries and centuries of you know past to look through which, what are they teaching their kids which is a uh, which is kind of a point the episode makes later but for now, we've got a rich guy. He's watching the promo. And he's like, "What? We're selling? We're we're selling these ood for only fifty credits? That's it? We're not gonna make any money off this shit." Uh, I'll pay you about three fifty. <laughs> <laughs> so then he has his personal ood, and he says, "Okay, go get me, go get me this file. Go get me the military file." And the ood comes back with the wrong file, and he's like, "This isn't the right file. Fuck are you on the bed." Oh, oh, also, also, I'm I'm sorry to interrupt you again. I'm sorry, but I have to point this out. The fact that he asks for military files and they say that they have to increase their sales to the army. Oh. What is the army using the ood for? Oh, Cannon God. fodder. Obviously, it's the obvious uh, thought. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I Fucking mean, hell. Yeah. <laughs> really, I didn't think of that, but ooh. Well, they they could be using as the equivalent of the of the uh, British Army Batman, and I'm not talking about the 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 superhero Batman. The Batman in the Indian say in the Indian Army was a British soldier's uh, assistant. Ah. 
I mean, I guess, but this is like the future. The most I can think of is maybe having some personal quote unquote servants on the ships, but even then, they might still get into a battle at some point. Yeah. What? It's, it, only, it, 50, it's only 50 credits to replace any ood you lose. Ugh. We've got to have money. Yeah. Ugh. But you know but you know what else we got to have the right mill the file. This isn't the right file. What do you want about? It? Oh, this root this ood suddenly has red eyes. Oh, he's electrocuting this guy. Good. <laughs> the no, ood gets a great wise okay, like um, um... The file is irrelevant. It, oh, why is that? Zap sib. Have a nice day. So, but it, it, it's okay. Ben Stein will come by later just to make this even worse and uh, give him something for the red eyes. <laughs> oh my god. We, we should mention, of course, we haven't covered the story, and I don't know how we haven't covered the story yet, but this is not the first appearance of the Ood. Nope. No. The Ood first appeared in the two-parter of the David Tennant era, The Impossible Planet and the Satan Pit, a story which Rainiac has professed a lot of love for. Mm -hmm. For Probably not entirely on just reasons. I remember fun. But they introduced the Ood, and well, they, uh, to briefly summarize that story, uh, they got red eyes as they were possessed by Satan. Yeah. That two parts. Which gets referenced later on in here. So it does. And Donna's reaction but, to it is I mean, kind of great. <laughs> watching at the time, you're meant to think, uh oh, these Ood are going bad again. Just like that time when they were possessed by Satan. So what's going on here? And so, after our titles, we cut to the Tenth Doctor and Donna. Actually, can, I, can I just bring up a little uh, fact about the uh, person electrocuted by uh, Delta 50? Who plays him, specifically? Uh-huh. So, the actor is Paul Clayton. He's not in any of the episodes of Doctor Who, but he does go on to have a much bigger role in Big Finish as Mr. Colchester in Torchwood. I see. And there's a great... I, I, I don't know what name this is, but there's a great trailer for one of the recent Torchwoods where it's him and Ace working together. Oh, man. And they make it clear that Ace does not like Torchwood at all. And so it's a bit like a... It could be worse. You could say you work for Torchwood. They just stop laughing nervously. It's like, oh, girl, you have no idea. <laughs> it could be worse. You have to work with uh, Captain Jack Harkness. Not anymore, you don't. <laughs> I think he's pretty much been... Uh, Exiled from Big Finish. But yeah. Torchwood is continuing. And um, they they do do some good sort of um, stories with Torchwood by focusing on other characters and introducing new characters. The ones with Bill as Manger, always a, always a treat. Always a highlight. By the way, for those of you who are observing and heard what I actually said, don't worry, I'm waiting to see if the boys actually hear it. I didn't hear it. I didn't catch it. Well, well... Well, no, if they did, if uh, or if they decide to actually watch it, Rez, later. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll listen back in the year, and then I'll react in a week's time. I will definitely catch it when I uh, start editing this up. I heard something, something Jack Hart. But he, he will not be allowed back to, uh, to be finished for the time being. Probably not at all. Probably not. Which but, uh... is a shame, because it got their big, uh, their big anniversary story with David Tennant cancelled. Oh no! Another David Tennant story. Canceled. I know, but a lot what of people. What do we do? A lot of people it's were looking like forward. It's not like they don't have twelve more of those. A fuckers. lot of people were looking forward to, to, the, to David Tennant finally interacting with Torchwood. What? Like he did in two thousand seven? He never interacted. But the show was good. Cats. <laughs> he only interacted with Torchwood in, in uh, Journey's End, didn't he? And that was just like a, a video call. Yeah. Anyways, the Doctor has set the TARDIS to random settings, so it's basically a roulette of where they are, or what he calls a mystery tour. So, they decide to go out, and you know, Donna's like, this, uh, as you said, this is supposed to be like her second episode after coming back, so it's a little obvious that she's like very excited, but also very terrified, and she has no idea what to expect. Maybe it'll be someplace beautiful, maybe it'll be fantastic. Maybe it'll be super fucking cold. Great. I can relate, given yesterday. Well, it's a great joke, because David Tennant comes out in his, uh, his big coat, and he's just like, oh, look at the view. And he goes on and on about the splendor and wonder of this planet. 
And if we pan away, and it's just like it pans back to the TARDIS, and Donna's not there, and she comes out with a big fur coat, and she's like, "What? I didn't hear a word you said." <laughs> it's really funny because the the doctor's like, "Can you hear anything I say while you're in that?" And she's like, "Pardon." <laughs> Donna with a true northern okay. attitude there, just getting the big coat and going out just into the snow. I love Donna. I missed her. Uh, Donna's so good. She That's is. She really she's is. She's particularly good in this. I, I'm so glad they didn't keep her to just a one-off, like, funny character. Hmm. We did the Runaway Bride, didn't we? We did what? The Runaway Bride. Yeah, we, yeah, we did. Yeah. But we haven't done any of her other stories, and other than Midnight, which has like a, a cameo, a small cameo in it. Yeah. Well, Donna is a done. really, really good companion. Best it's okay. Artist. One day we'll do yes. turn left, and then we'll all cry. Oh my god. Well, I mean, I'll cry, but also I'll be happy because there's a circle of mirrors. Is that well, what no, see, to we'll all cry because uh, we'll be once again referencing the fucking Time Lord Victoria sh shit. Is is that all it takes to make you happy? No. It's just a circle of mirrors. No, but it's a good start. <laughs> a circle of mirrors, and in the mi middle is the moon mirror card. I, I love how the Doctor is so excited yeah. to actually be in the middle of proper snow. Not ash from exploding spaceships. Not excitation caused by the stone screwdriver, but actual real snow. Hey, there's an actual real rocket overhead, too. Hooray. And Donna the rocket flies to civilization. Well, kind of. Yeah, Donna gets a great bit where she's like, look, a, rocket, a proper rocket. You've got a box. He's got a Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> so this is actually the uh, the head of the operations here with the Ood facility. Uh, Kleinman Halpin. Great which villain. is a very, very unfortunate name. It is. You know, like, even if he wasn't a villain, or he, it, it's still a really unfortunate name. Do they ever say the? Do they ever say his first name in the show? No. I have absolutely no idea, but his name is Kleinman, which if you take away a few letters and put some in, you get Kleinman almost. God. That's Just no. saying. Dead, but he's dead. here to he's here to cover for the uh, the obvious red shirt that was in the the cold open for the episode. He's also a dick. He's a great oh, villain, but he is a dick. I mean, look, I, I'll argue pretty much everyone in this story, besides from the Doctor and Donna, are dicks. Absolutely, and and one other character that we can't mention yet. And that's yeah. the point of the story, kind of. But anyway. So they're discussing this shit, and they they know about the whole Ood with red eyes thing. They got video of the uh, Ood killing the guy, and and it ran off, but it was shot. So it's like, okay, well, that's yeah. fucking dealt with, I guess. And Halpern also uh, has a personal Ood with him, Ood Sigma. Yes. And Ood he Sigma he also uh, a... tends to hang out with Doctor Ryder and Solana. Solana being like the show girl or our. PR... The, the 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 saleswoman. That's what I'm she's looking a, for. She's a rap. Show girl. Yeah, she's a rap. She's the rap. And Halpern also, uh, well, he's kind of balding, and so he basically has his personal ood constantly give him shots of hair tonic to try and grow back his hair because he's lost it from baldness, stress, whatever the hell you call it. There's a great little character bit where Solana says, "Sir, you know you're you're not allowed alcohol on this on this, uh, on this facility." He just looks at her and says. It's hair tonic, if you must know. Yes, he, he says that his hair loss is from stress over the past five years. Why, I don't know, because yeah, it seems like he has it a pretty sure fucking good not job. It, it sure is stressful selling sentient beings as property. Man, I'm so stressed out by it. I, I think... Man. Me here with my personal servant that I was able to afford before it got lowered down to 50 credits. I don't know if this is mentioned here or not, but I'm going to bring it up here. It's a family business. Yeah. 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 Unfortunately. Yeah. Oh boy. Generational oppression. Nothing says capitalism like uh, inherited wealth and businesses. Hey, I mean, look at the Christmas Carol. Got the same sort of thing, huh? 
Yeah, inherited. it's a, it's a, it's okay though. It's okay. Halpin, you know, he only got a small loan of a million dollars, so it's fine. That might be some reference I'm not getting, but anyway. Oh no, she's talking about all these articles that pop up. It's like how I was able to afford a house and how you can too. And they invariably go into, so all I did was I got a small loan of a million dollars from my parents and. Well, like, realistically, I was quoting Donald Trump because that's what he said. What what kind oh, of but... spam emails are you getting in North, in North America? My favorite articles are the ones that are like, you could totally get a house at, you know, like 25. All you have to do is just cut out all the Starbucks. It's like, fuck you. Oh, yeah. God. Oh. I can't even afford Starbucks. Christ. So, the doctor and Donna then find the ood that killed the guy in the open. And he's been shot, and he's basically dying in the snow. So the doctor tries to treat the ood. And D D Donna at first is like, oh, God, doctor, what is it? It's a he, not an it. Come on. That's it's like, this is like a, a person, like anyone, like anyone else. So show a little respect. And that mellows out Donna, and she's like, hey, it's okay. I mean, we're here to help you. This is the doctor. He'll help you. And the Ood says, the circle must be broken. And then leers up with the red eye before keeling over and passing away. There's a heartbreaking gotcha. bit here with Donna where um, the doctor tells her that the orb that the Ood's got is a translation device. And Donna, you know, without thinking, just grabs it, talks into it, says, my name's Donna, thinking, you know, it's a translation device for the Ood. Yeah. Like, that's how you, 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 you communicate with an Ood. And of course she's wrong, but it's a very human thing to do. She's yeah. trying. She made an attempt. Yeah. And, and yeah, okay, she said, oh, get it away from me. But th that's just fear, and she quickly learns. Yeah. How about that? I don't she think we can really give her too much of a bad time, Donna, here. I mean, think think of it like this. How about that? She initially didn't know the deal with the Ood. The doctor explained the deal with the Ood, and then she's like, oh, okay, I understand now. This is a this is a sentient being, a person like anyone else. It's just an alien. I'm not used to seeing aliens. Not really, so, okay. You know, showing empathy for this sentient creature, unlike basically anyone else in this fucking story. Yeah. I mean, she even wants to bury the Ood, and the doctor's like, no, let the snow do it. And so, as they're walking to the uh, base, the doctor exposits a bit. The Ood are the servants of humanity here in the 42nd century, and they're usually harmless and totally benign, except for the last time he met them. What happened there? Long story. We got a lot of time. Uh, the devil took them over. If you're going to take the Mickey, don't bother. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> well, the problem was that he did take the Mickey with them, and then it was completely ruining the show. So there are there are callbacks to what happened in the Satan Pit and the Impossible Planet. True, the excellent story. I, I can't recommend that enough. Yeah, but also, I mean, the story kind of criticizes the actions of the Doctor in that a little. A little. Yes, it does, and that's fine. Okay. fine yeah. You want storytelling. <laughs> There you go. Actions having consequences, etc., etc. Growing as people. <laughs> you love to see it. I will say that in the in the Impossible Planet and the Satan Pit, the Ood aren't really explored that much before they go um, red eye and, and turn into the threat of the episodes. Yeah. Some some of the the aspects are explored in greater detail here, which is good because Rose is is like appalled in that episode when she first meets the Ood. Like um. Well, like a slave race, is it, you know, don't you want to be free? I was like, no, they, they want to be servants. But do they? But that, that doesn't get expanded upon in that story. It gets expanded upon here. So yeah. they they um they find the, um what should we call it? The uh, the site? Ood Operations. Ood Operations, oh. yeah. <laughs> Over a hill. He calls it civilization. It, it, it really isn't. And there's a great bit Trust where they, me, there's nothing civilized here. They they meet up with Solana, who's showing the reps and, and, and various guests in for drinks and a demonstration of the Ood. And the Doctor and Donna turn up at the last minute and they use the psychic paper. But um, 
there's a little twist with the psychic paper here where instead of just saying, you know, oh, I'm, I'm from the ministry or whatever, and it just shows up, Donna gives a cover story and the psychic paper shows what Donna just said. <laughs> Yes, they're from the Noble Corporation PLC Limited Intergalactic. I love how um, Tony's wiki puts in brackets a fictitious company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not it's entirely not not read it up. Not entirely <laughs> real. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. But uh, I really like the juxtaposition of this next scene, the way it's directed. I also and like the, the fact director. that um, they, they make, make fun of the fact that it's the Doctor and Mrs. Noble. Oh no, we're not yeah. married! <laughs> Cute joke. As they're hitting in, the alarm goes off and the Doctor's like, ooh, that sounds like an alarm. And Solana, the PR rep, the spinner of the thing, says, oh no, that's just the work drill. Ah, uh, that's nothing to worry about. But it actually is an alarm because there's another red-eyed ood on the run being hunted down by the guards. And the episode juxtaposes between Solana's pitch of like, as you see, the Ood are happy to serve us, and we keep them in facilities of the highest standard. Juxtaposed with this Ood running from the guards who are like, Hunt Ood! Hunt Ood down like a dog and kill it! Hey, Prez. <clears throat> hey. Um, okay, so I know that we usually do these things in a, in a certain way. Like, we... Try not to reveal things that happen in the episode too early for dramatic effect and also to make the story flow a little bit better. Um, does anybody mind if I quote unquote spoil this episode in order to make a comparison? Not at all. Oh, wow. Because I, I have a feeling that I'm not going to remember it at the end. Um, okay. Go ahead. Glam is just plan of the U done again. Wait, what? What is plan of the U? Kablam. Oh, Jesus. Woo! <laughs> This is, main this is force of the facility is going insane and starting to kill people. Nobody knows exactly what's going on. And then it turns out that the, you know, the main part of the facility, you know, brain versus the AI, are being controlled and hurt by something else. In this case, you know, a, a top level person versus, you know, a, uh, a essentially a janitor. And they're being, you know you know, tortured and used in order to do these horrible things. You know, I never, I, I, I had a, I definitely had a Kiefer Blam comparison later in the episode, but I never really thought of like comparing this episode, how similar they are. Holy shit. Yeah, that's good. That's a good comparison. That is a good comparison, but, and also I, this I'm is a way I'm starting to think that Frez's whole, you know, remember 2007 when the show was good? It's a little bit more on the nose than we thought. I mean, I didn't even pick up on this one. No. So, like... <sighs> I've taught you well, Cat. Let's change the tone I'm so a sorry. bit. <laughs> Let's change but, the tone wow, a bit with yeah. some uh, quote-unquote comedy. There's not much comedy in this episode because, you know, it's, it's telling oh. a very harrowing story. But wow. the, uh, the, the, the presentation of the Ood by Solana... <laughs> uh, can I just mention real quick, just... The, yes. the cap of the scene where the Ood is being chased uh, it's actually like snarling like rah, rah, and the it's and foaming the guy, at the mouth too yeah and the uh, the uh, head guard uh, Kess Commander Kess Commander Kess he's calling in to help her and he's like uh, this isn't Red Eye this is something entirely different and help him's just like take the Ood to Dr. Ryder as he as he looks in the mirror at his hair Whoop 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 whoop, Doctor Who Mirror Learn. I'll, mm. I'll have a bigger. I'll have a big. I'll have a bigger one. I know you have. Yeah. <laughs> I, either way, it's it, um. If I'm remembering this scene correctly, they've got the Ood strung up, and he's like snarling and growling at Halper, hey, or Halpin. Have... Sorry. Oh no no, go ahead go ahead. I, I'll, I'll do the scene later. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I said Halper instead of Halpin. So, okay. um, but he's like okay. snarling at Halpin and um, Dr. Ryder is right behind him and you know he's like send the Ood to Dr. Ryder to figure out what's going on and the doctor's like I don't want it what are you talking about so he decides oh well then it'll be much easier to transport this Ood if it's already dead oh, damn. and then they basically oh. firing squad this poor Ood yeah, yeah that, the that doctor does get, get to see um, the, the, the chained up uh, rabid Ood so called rabid Ood that's in a later scene, but we can talk about it here. That's no problem. 
Yeah. It's... I also want to mention, and uh, I'm going I'm going to link it here. I'm going to link it again for you for you to put in the episode. My own screen cap. Uh, during oh no, Solana's you're right. Pitch, that is a different scene. During Solana's Shit. pitch, she happens to say. Oh my god! And if you're li- if you're listening and not watching the podcast, she says, "At heart, what is an ood but a reflection of us?" Go ahead, yeah. you can say it. Mirror alert. You feel better for that? A little. Good. Anyway, uh, I think Rain, you had. An, speaking of Solana, you uh, want to talk about? Uh, oh God, this scene. The- the translator variety page. The the, the, the I no. The juxtaposition of this is just crazy. It's not just. So while you've got this poor rude being chained up and examined and then eventually shot, as Cat says, by the guards. While that's going on, you have Solana pitching the ood to these various representatives of, of different companies. And then it's just like today. we have a, we have a, per, a special offer for you, the translator pack. We have the standard one. It's just Silas Carson's voice, Ood voice, because he voices all the Ood. Uh, apart from Brian Cox in the other time, but apart from that, he voices all of the Ood. Did he voice the Ood, ood in uh, the, the final bits of Flux? Yes. I see. Okay. Yes, he so did. They, by the way, that ood survived. Fucking cares. What happened to that ood in Flux, by the way? Because it didn't die. Who fucking cares? It's the Flux. Yeah, mood. That's a that's a fair point. But then it's like, and we for for the for the uh, for the gentleman, and he said, "How are you today, ood?" And this sexy female voice comes out of an ood translation sphere. I don't know how to feel about that. Ugh. And the third one is ood. You drop something. Don't. God. Hey, look, for a little extra money, you can make your slave say funny things. <laughs> You're oppressing a sentient life form. And is it an can actual... I just say, uh... Sorry, go on. Well, I, I was just going to say that even the fact that I didn't remember what happens later in this episode and what the translation orbs actually do, we'll get to that, um, I still felt that this was like completely disgusting to me. Because this is still a sentient creature that's being forced to have their voice translated in order to make some humans laugh. Yep. And it gets worse when and, you uh, find out the truth. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. It gets. It absolutely gets worse. But um, she, Solana also says that if your ood is happy, you're happy. And it's like just, just. Oh, this whole thing is so gross, and I hate it. I great episode. Hate the situation. Yeah, I oh, yeah. I do not remember disliking Solana so much, but watching this again, good god. Yeah, she might be worse than other characters just because she she knows what's going on and turns a blind eye to it. I mean, there's a, there's some great stuff later in the episode involving that too. Oh my god, yes. Yeah, but but uh, so the Doctor and Donna get a bit of alone time as everyone disperses and the doctor immediately goes to a computer terminal thing and it starts hitting buttons to uh, get a galactic map of where they're at and he's like oh we're on the ood spear it's, it's, I've been, i was here a long time ago it's close to the planet scent spear which believe it or not is a sly goddamn reference to an old william hartnell story called the sensorites which yeah. for 2008 is a deep cut it's like and I, I, I forgive it this because in 2008, you know, the show wasn't as like, holy shit, look, it's the thing that you remember. Like, these, these were still very much, you know, little tiny treats rather than yeah. every episode being like, oh, hey, look, it's fucking... Raina Morbius Doctor's real. It's the Sea Devils. Yeah, it's... God damn it, we got a month and a half before we have to deal with that shit. Also, god damn it, that was originally <laughs> going to be her final story. What? Yep, that was confirmed at Gallifrey 1 this weekend. Oh yeah, oh, we haven't talked about Gallifrey 1. There's a lot confirmed I'm Gallifrey leaving that 1. at the end of the after we've done Planet of the Ood. Yeah, okay, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll save our thoughts for that. But I mentioned Sea Devils before I bring it up here, that, that one specific bit. All right, we'll, we'll come back to that when we're finished. We, we, get, a, um, we get a, a small... Um, Plot art for the uh, for the finale of this series as well. The bees disappearing. 
it's pretty light of an arc word comparison. It's, it's no bad wolf or uh, you are not alone. It's really clever because it's like Donna's like, wow, I can't believe the Earth is still populated. I mean, all those uh, all those warnings that the world was going to end in my lifetime, like <laughs> global warming and the the bees disappearing. Yeah, what's up with the bees disappearing? That's weird. <laughs> Global warming. <laughs> Man, it's great that here in 2022, we don't have to deal with global warming or the disappearance of bees anymore. Not like in the late 2000s. No. Please. Yeah. I've just, I've just, I've just remembered the vegan honey argument and I, I feel so much stupider. Can we move so, on? <laughs> the doctor states this is the second great and bountiful human empire in the year 4,126, which... Donna's a little incredulous about it. Oh my god, I'm in the year 4,126. Holy shit. But there's also the question of, are humanity explorers or more like a virus? And then they talk to an Ood and they're basically like, hey, don't the Ood get a say in how they're treated? And apparently the Ood are born to serve. Otherwise, they die. So, wow. Look at us nice humans doing the Ood a favor by letting them serve rather than die. Aren't we just the most generous here at Ood Operations? And then Isn't the Ood so mentions... kind of us? <laughs> and then the Ood mentions a terrifying psychological B-horror movie. Which one is that? The Circle. Oh. <laughs> yeah. If you've never seen The Circle, don't. Like it's not bad. In fact, it's it's actually very good, but it will it will it will creep you out. So th this is around where we get that scene we mentioned of uh, the, the, the red Ood and Halpern being just like, oh well, you know, it'll be easy to, to examine the Ood if it's dead. Shoot it. But Ryder also wants to examine Warehouse Fifteen, just in case something's up there, even though it's like forbidden, no access, no entry allowed. Except by direct order of Halpern, I guess. He's like, I want to take a look at it just in case. Halpern also mentions that there hasn't been any sort of activity there for 200 years. Years they've been doing this shit, huh? Wow. And then comes a scene that... Well, I'm going to talk about, but I'm not going to like go too super in-depth on because like, I don't feel qualified. I'll explain. So yeah, question, just a reminder to people: we are three very, very white, privileged yeah. people. I'm going to I'm going to mention it and just say that there's something under the hood of the story, but I do not in any way feel qualified to poke the engine of it, so to speak. But I have to bring it up. So the Doctor and Donna sneak out of the uh, P, of the little P PR show, and they head out onto this balcony, this frigid balcony, where the Ood are being forced to march and one of the Ood trips and falls and we see Kess and he starts cracking a whip and says get up come on Ood move march and at this point I would like to mention that this story has diverse casting both the the actress playing Solana is is she a South Asian actress I believe I want to so. say yes but obviously um let me lo let me look it up real fast. I've got it. Certainly Her name. A woman, I've got you. A woman of color. Her name is Aisha Darker. So yes. Yes. And the actor playing Kess is a black man. He is. Yes. So we have diverse casting in this story about Ood operations, and these people oh. are oppressing a race of sentient beings and keep and treating them like slaves. And we have a black guy cracking a whip and saying, Move! March! Get up! Like, there's something fucking going on here. About the oppressed of the past becoming the oppressors in the future. Like you said, forgetting, like, the sins of the past and shit. There's something yep. fucking going on there. But as you said, we're three white people. I am not qualified to tinker with this, but, like... Yeah. There is definitely something being said here. I, I would also like to point out the fact that maybe they didn't intend for something to be said there to that depth. It could just be that he was the best actor for the job, and the message came after. Yeah, okay. So and the original the message writer... was just, you know, the whole, you know, this still the subjugation of people. So we're not, not we're not ignoring that. 
The writer may not have intended it, but in the casting, they created that. Yes. So it's there. Like Yes. So we don't want to talk over people of color, but there's there's something there. Yes. And it's supremely fucked up. Yeah. And as and Donna watching this is basically just says, they're not servants. They're slaves. Also, also, I just want to say this. If anybody out there who possibly is one of those people who happens to like <laughs> saying that, yeah. oh, but they're not human. It's not the same thing. Fuck you. What? Fuck you. Leave. Get off this planet. Even the doctor, and, and this is going back to the fact that Impossible Astronaut and Satan Pit is being found lacking. He's like, you know, I never thought to actually ask the Ood last time if they were ser willing servants or forcibly enslaved. He was too busy running around dealing with Satan to s actually save them in that story. Oh, don't and forget the whole bit where um, Donna realizes that the Ood are slaves and the doctor says it's not so different from her time. To which Donna replies, she doesn't keep slaves. Well, he that's... simply just says... Who makes your clothes? Well, that's a little later. That's a little later. No, no it's, it's, it's here. It's, it's, it's here. during this. No, no, no. It's not here. It's they, before it's the doctor it says, I, I regret I didn't do anything about it back on um, back on Crop Tour. Now I'm going to do something about it. Yeah. He says he yeah. feels he owes them one. Yeah. Uh, they, they see the Ood. She makes a comment. He says it's not that different. And, she, you know, makes a remark about the clothes. And Donna says... It, it, do you just take humans around with you in order to make cheap shots? No. Well, and then the doctor's like, later. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Mm. Honestly, that I'm just later. as bad. I... It doesn't fucking happen later. It happens now. It happens no, about 30 said, seconds after it, yeah. It ha it yeah, the doctor, then the, says, the doctor then says that he couldn't save the Ood on Crop Tour, and he regrets that he never actually thought about the fact that, you know, he probably should have asked them if this is what he wanted. Well, okay, when, whenever the fuck Sin, uh, like, yeah. You have two uh, people telling you you're wrong. I think you're wrong. I I won't take the L on this. <laughs> just take the L. Sometimes it's just it's just better to just take the L and move on. I swear exactly. to God, it happens when they're in the warehouse looking at the container of food that the, no. the closing happens. I hand no. to God. I watched this episode about two hours before we started recording. It didn't happen then. Yeah, I'm talking about the scene on the balcony. I'm I'm balcony. not just saying this to make you you feel bad or anything like that. It it didn't happen then. Yeah, but it's well, fine. It's fine. I get things wrong all the time in this yeah. show. Then I'll talk about that scene here. It's like, yeah, yeah. The doctor is making kind of a cheap shot here, but also you know it's like, well, who? Where did you source your clothes, doctor? Did you source your clothes from an ethical fucking thing, or did you just grab whatever looked good? Because that feels very David Tennant Doctor, doesn't it? Oh, it's a coat. Looks nice. I'm not going to question where it came from. Also, can, can I just say, I'm just going to uh, quote John Oliver a little bit here, where it's it's been this way for years. We all are perfectly aware of exactly what large clothing companies are doing. Even to the point where it's like, hey, do you remember when this company had that huge scandal? That's okay. We forgot about it when this commercial came out and showed all these people dancing in this outfit to this happy music. I mean, you it's know like what they I, say. I, I think it, that's just what perfectly like sums up this entire episode is that humans are willing to do whatever they can in order to make their lives easier, even to the point of ignoring horrible cruelty. It's like they say. There is no ethical consumption under capitalism. It's almost like we should abolish it. Yeah. Yeah. Funny so, how that works. So, uh, back with Halpern and Ryder in Warehouse 15, they're checking out shit, and it's very smelly, and they're looking down at a balcony at something or other, and, uh, R and Ryder's like, uh, can I check the signal to make sure everything's good? And so he's checking this machine, he's looking at all the readings and whatnot, and he's like, yeah, everything's fine here. There's nothing wrong here. Let's leave. And so Halpern looks down at the Ood Daddy, as he calls it. Which, 
has much worse connotations saying that out loud than I intended, but that's what he says. Yeah. And he gets Can a we call also from... surmise that the all the Ood are male? Question mark? Well, we don't know, because the voice is given to them. Yeah. Don't Plus, also, we don't know exactly what kind of, you know, uh, reproducing they oh do. Oh my god, that's why, it, that's why the Udell had a different voice to all the other Ood, because he's a free... Oh my god, brilliant. Gosh. So, uh, Halpern then gets the call from Solana that, hey, uh, we had two people come in here from the Noble Corporation, and uh, they're intruders. No such thing. Yeah. So the Doctor and Donna head into a warehouse... And they find a whole bunch of containers filled with ood ready to be shipped off. Oh. Like fucking oh. cargo. A great big oh. empire built on slavery. They're not even like sitting, they're standing there. So yeah, in rows. they have like this this giant this giant crane claw that comes and picks everything up and but we'll see later that this thing is not accurate. This thing swings shit around. It's like these poor Ood having to stand in these boxes, packed to the gills, while they're being swung around like this. Just fuck. It keeps getting worse. And like, if you really want to think about it, how long does it take to ship these Ood to God knows where? Yeah. Like, what do they bathroom. eat? What do they drink? Do they have to use the bathroom? Poor guys. But yeah, this is where I'm pretty sure the conversation that I said happened with the who made your clothes, Donna. I'm not no. taking the on this. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll watch it no, back this... after we've done this and I'll, I'll see who which of us is yeah, right. Yeah, put okay, okay. Rain, Rain, watch it back and like put in a post-it note and say and tell put in the note and post and tell and tell the viewers who was right and who was wrong here. Watch as yeah. we, we were both was... wrong, it's a different scene entirely. Because I I'm telling you I'm say, I'm saying that this scene happens when they are in the warehouse looking at the Ood in the shipping crates, and you two are saying it happens when they're on Give the balcony. Give me five fucking seconds. When they're on the balcony, and Kess is whipping and going, move, move, move. That's when you say this. I think it's then, yeah, because it's... Donna makes the uh, the comparison, that the uh, the realisation they're not servants Actually, and slaves. Brez, 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 why don't you just look up the transcript? Let's look up the transcript, okay. Good idea. Okay. Find the transcript, look for this, the scene you're looking for. It's not wasting time that, that could cause the uh, the router to go out of power because of the storm. But... Hmm. Slavery. Why is looking at Oh! Up? Oh! Should, should I... How do you want... The, do you want me to screen cap this? Or Let me guess, me we're all wrong. Do you want me to screen... Hang on, do you want me to screen cap or do you want me to link the text? Log. Whatever you think, just just tell us who's right, who's wrong. Me. You. Uh, are you right or are you wrong? Oh, he's right. Good huh. God, Mandela effect. Wow. Well, so I was wrong, you were wrong, and Tardis Wiki was wrong. Which you know that's speed. You were going so. off the Tardis. That no, no, we, we, we were going off what we thought. No, I was going off the fact that I watched it last night. I was going off my memory from two hours ago, and I could have sworn it was on the balcony. Okay, now now I'm going to have to check the actual episode because so, something's weird here. Like like I said, Mandela effect. Can we move on? <laughs> Yeah, let's move. Okay. So they're all standing in a so, circle. Uh... That that um <laughs> that movie again gets mentioned. Don't don't look up the ending. Just just don't. The dude don't even understand the concept of freedom. And they're talking about the circle, and then they say the circle must be broken so that they can sing. And Donna's like, why uh, can't why don't they just run? You know, the, the the crate's open, just just leave. They don't have the concept of freedom and imprisonment. Isn't that just terrifying? I wonder why that is. But uh unfortunately, uh Alert, alert, alarm. The Doctor and Donna have been discovered. There's there's a great bit where um the, the commander has raised the alarm. He's like, you idiot, I said no alarms. Well, so Solana the Doctor off and Donna. A, a it's okay, we have a fire drill this time every day. Nothing's wrong, <laughs> moves away, and her face just drops. <laughs> so the Doctor and Donna get separated. Donna gets immediately captured by soldiers and locked in one of the shipping containers with the Ood while they deal with the Doctor. And then, fucking, this, this shit happens. Okay, Can, like, may I take this? 
Yes. This is a great action scene. It is. You can you can you can still have great action scenes in these you know thought provoking political yeah I said it political episodes. And this, this is political. And this is one of them. So um, <laughs> yeah, but you know that people don't like the word political. Well, fuck them. This is a political. Because it reminds me that things story. are political, and therefore can be changed. Fucking, fucking deal with it, motherfucker. It's 2008 when the show was good. You know, like Chimple said. What? what and he, it was political. What? What my deal co-host said. What my co-host said. So uh, yeah, the uh, the commander Kess. I'll just call him Kess from now on. Yeah. Kess says we've gone cornered. All guards move out. What? I said I've got this. Move to the perimeter. And he he basically starts playing a giant crane game. <laughs> This fucking unhinged, psychopathic monster is just like, oh, a prisoner. I want to kill him with a giant crane. I've That'll always wanted to do this. Fun. The the laugh he gives so is a the laugh he gives is amazing. It's like he is just going. He's going for it. The like, laugh was so good it made it into the series four trailer after Voyage of the Damned. And like, okay, it is a good action. It's Doctor Who getting attacked by a fucking crane. It's ludicrous. It's gonzo. I love it, but at the same time, it's like, how fucking unhinged do you have to be? Like, I mean, obviously, he's a fucking... And I think we used this when we talked about Warriors Gate. He's a fucking slaver. Yeah. So it's like, yay! I get to murder a man with a crane! That's normal! That's fun! Ha 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 ha! And no while the while the chase is going on, for... it's it's a really well shot chase sequence too, and the and the doctor is getting battered around as he tries to avoid this giant crane, this yeah. giant claw on the end of it. And while this is happening, the ood that Donna are locked up with have the red eye, and they're advancing on her menacingly. And so just as the doctor is about to get killed by this absolute madman with a fucking crane game. The crane stops, and it turns out Solana pulled out the keys. It's like, no, nope, Halpern said that he wants them captured alive. He was never going to so, kill him, though, because he just had it hanging over him. No, 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 it was hanging over him because Solana pulled out the keys. He okay, I'm, I'm sorry. He was going to like a pancake, I'm convinced. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I, I'm still harping on this. How the fuck did both myself and Rainiac remember it completely differently? Mandela Effect. Mandela effect. I know, but it's it's so creepy. But what what's the name of the bear family from the books? I I, I need to make sure. I, 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 well, we yeah, never got I, those books, I, so I don't know what it. <laughs> for me, yeah. for me, it was it was always the Berenstein Bears. I I don't fucking know what the units I'm in anymore. I don't know what the Berenstein Bears are, so. He doesn't even know. <laughs> Did they really not get those books in the UK? No. You've never seen the Bernstein Bears? Not that I know of. Not when I was growing up, anyway. Well, Funny fuck I... you. You're from an alternate universe. Fred, is it, is it still the Bernstein <laughs> Bears? Well, you're saying it out loud, so I can't tell if you're saying Bernstein Bears or Bernstein Bears. It's either Bernstein or Bernstein, and I remember Bernstein. I don't remember anymore. Let's go to Wikipedia and find out. Having just been told I, I come from an alternate like... universe... I'm actually kind of shaky because not only do I remember it as they're talking in the snow, but Brainiac remembers it that way, and Tardis Wiki has made it that way. Cat. But you in the transcript and watching parts of the episode back, which I actually did just now, Cat, I had to tell you this. Proved that we were wrong. I had to tell you well, this. Maybe, maybe I. Wait, hang on. Yeah. Okay. Can yeah, I get a word in edgeways? Jesus. No. <laughs> Yes, go ahead. It's Berenstain Bears. I, st I still feel like I'm lost in an alternate dimension now. It's not fun. Hey, how about that film Kazam so, starring uh, Sinbad? Where, where's, where's the alternate dimension where I'm rich as fuck? Can I go to that one? How, how about that film Shazam starring Sinbad? How good is that? What does that have to do with anything? That's a very, very um, prominent example of the Mandela effect. People are swear blind. There is a film about a genie called Shazam, starring the comedian Sinbad. 
Rea- in reality, they were remembering him. In that in film, reality, it's, in reality, the film is Kazam starring Shaquille O'Neal. Oh, yeah. oh yes. But yes, people, okay. people don't only swear they've seen this film. They know of the plot of this film that doesn't exist. Wild. It's a, it's kind of amazing if you think about it. Honestly, Shazam and Kazam sound so f- similar to me that I, I honestly get this confused all the time. Well, I, I messed like, up because no, I, I actually I, got the right name the first time and then got the wrong name the second. But... And then Sinbad was in so many kids' movies at the time, like uh, fucking Jingle All the Way and shit. Yeah. yeah, which 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 I shall mention is another fine roasting of capitalist consumerist culture for the holiday, a hallmark of Christmas movies. It also contains the big show. It also contains the big show. It was a mole center that was going to kick on his ass. It also no. was such a symbol of anti-capitalism that it got a sequel. I'm gonna I'm gonna deck your holes, bub. What a fucking beautiful movie. So uh, back to the I'm Dr. not kidding. Movie. It got a sequel. I know. I know it got a sequel, and I refuse to watch it. But back to the Doctor Who. Uh... All right, I'm just going to ground myself in reality. So, so you're right. Solana has stopped the, the claw. Whether he was going to kill him with it or not, we'll never find out. Oh, and they mercifully let Donna out of the container just before the red-eyed dude are about to kill her. But they don't lock the container again. <laughs> just come out and fucking electrocute the guards. So the girls are getting wiped out by the Ood. In the in the confusion, Kess is opening fire and and, and and they're taking cover. So the Dots of Don and Solana run away as the bullets are firing everywhere and the Ood are zapping people. It's kind of carnage. And this is where Solana basically marks her fate. Yeah. Because she's there's talks that like, like, she's like, you know, I don't know. So you know, don't, don't you know about this? Everyone on earth knows about this, and you do nothing to stop it. Everyone People knows. Earth, well, do they? It, well, it, the way it's framed is like if people on Earth knew how the Ood were treated, they'd stop it. But they do know. Do they? They don't ask. So it's basically the same thing, isn't it? Yeah, and then, and then the doctor um, throws that back at her. He says, You know what's going on here, don't you? Oh, no, you don't ask. Yeah. And he says, A species born to serve could never evolve in the first place. So what did you do to them? It's nothing to do with me. Oh, why? Because you don't ask? That's it. And then he appeals to Solana, come with us. Try, try, and sh- help, try and do something right. Try and help. Try and help. Yeah, they're over here, guards. He calls to the guards. Like, she can't fucking imagine a way out of the system where she's not the bad guy. So she's like, oh, guards, oh, oh make the problem go away. She, she, she does give him funny. a hint. Go on. Uh, something funny is that if she had gone with the doctor, she probably would have survived this whole episode. I know. Exactly. Maybe that's kind of the point. It is the point. The doctor it? chooses a companion as well, but maybe fate also chooses who isn't worthy enough to be a companion. I, mean, I don't know. He would take a slaver on board, even a reform. He absolutely one, I mean, wouldn't. Uh, he absolutely wouldn't. But uh, she might have no. survived. He, I, he probably wouldn't have had her killed. Yeah, she would have. She would have lived, probably. He, he would have given her the chance to redeem herself, mm-hmm. and instead, she died being what she always was—someone willing to turn a blind eye to what her company was doing. She and, she and, does give them the directions to where they need to go to find out what's happening, and then she calls for the guards. We don't see her for a while. Then there's a scene where the guards have got control of the of the Ood again. Can, can we just talk about Solana for a little bit? Oh, sure, more yes, here? yes. Because, uh, you know, maybe in her head that's like her little concession, how she, you know, how she lets herself sleep at night, metaphorically. Oh, I told them where the warehouse was, so it's okay that I called for the guards and did my job. I did a good thing, see? So I'm not an oppressor. I told them where the thing was. She also told her boss where they were, so... And, like, yeah, so... It's it's the same thing like with a uh, Kess cracking the whip. Like a diverse actress is implicit is playing a character implicit in this system of exploitation and slavery. So they're definitely saying something here. But it comes down again, doesn't it, to who's the worst person? Kess, who is violent and sadistic, but knows he is. 
or Solana, who knows something is going on that's terrible, but there's nothing to stop it. Well, I mean, it's not for us to judge. It's for the oppressed to judge, the Ood. And we know how they judge Solana, who isn't as bad as Kes, who was a have... violent place I have a third option that you might have thought of. Okay. Remember when Fres pointed out the whole um, reading that now we could also see the fact that the uh, the oppressed have become the oppressors? Yeah. What if that's also what Solana is worried about? She's willing to help, you know, the doctor and, and you know, get to the place. But then she thinks about it and thinks... If he manages to figure out a way to stop the being slaves, what if I get enslaved by them? They would hate us. Surely they must be just like us. Because, oh as I said before, they're a reflection of humanity. Oh, that's a good read. I'm so proud of you right now. That's a chilling read, but that's a good read. It's hor yeah, it's horrifying, but also, you know, it points at the mirror thing. Oh, my God. Wow. Uh, uh, honestly, I think that this episode is one of those ones that really point out human nature in general, where we can each have our own reading of what the character is saying or doing or thinking, and they could all be entirely right. That just goes to show how diverse humanity truly is. We can all see the same thing and yet get something different out of it. And that's why, you know, having a variety of people and, you know, um, uh, Things that they've experienced, places that they're from, cultures, religions, everything is so important. Because we each get something different out of an episode and we each think of different things. Yeah. And that's why racism is bad. Can't, I, I can't like, do it for real like because I will I will pop the microphone, but uh, just imagine I'm giving you a massive round of applause because my God, that was outstanding. Okay. But, and, and also, it's kind of like how uh, the, the right wing. Uh, how, how should I put this? They're afraid that the left will do to them what they want to do to them. The North American right and left, we should probably... And in fairness, yeah, 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 vice, yeah, yeah, yeah. vice versa, feel this way as well. Yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah. Same. Yeah. yeah, it's like, oh, well, we gotta oppress these people because if we let them go free while they'll oppress us. Oh no, my rights, my rights! But if I what... don't take the bribes, then it's, that means somebody else will get the bribes, and I will miss out. I'm yeah. the most important person here. Yeah. So... I like to call this main character syndrome, where yes. everybody automatically assumes that they're the main character when they're just one character in a vast world full of people. Mm -hmm. it, it's kind of like it's kind of like um, how MMOs. Whenever you play them online, they try to make it so that you're the special one. But you can look around and see all the other people who are getting the exact same story you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Halpern is stressed out enough that he actually starts losing his hair at this <laughs> whole thing. And uh, Kess has managed to uh, get the wood under control and lock the uh, shipping container thing. And so, well, what's their get what's their grand plan? They've got two thousand nude and they've gone bad and they've got the red eye and they're just like, Oh well, two thousand nude. Eh, Curance will write them off. We can start all over. Kill them. Not just kill them. No. Get the gas canisters. <laughs> you remember uh you remember in the uh, the Sunmakers? Oh. When we had that oh. little uncomfortable thing? Yeah. We're getting oh, flashbacks no. of that, aren't we? This this oh, does no. lead to the best this... come up into the entire episode, but this is all. No, no, no rain, 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 rain. This is this is more than just awkward. This is oh gosh. You know, they're yeah. I'm tugging at my <sighs> collar as we speak. Let's put it that way. Next to Rooney. For, for those who might not be getting it, Auschwitz. Yeah. I didn't think it needed that, to be said. I'm, that's all I'm going to say. I didn't think it needed to be oh, stated, but. <laughs> Trust me, for some people, it needs to be said. There are still people who don't believe it happened. I sincerely hope that such people aren't listening to our weird lefty show. But... Oh, I hope so too, but you, you have to you always, never know. always plan yeah. for the worst. Okay. Absolutely. 
And speaking so of the, the worst, doctor... the, ne the next scene is also harrowing as hell. Yeah, so the Doctor and Donna have made it to the warehouse that they're trying to get to. And the Doctor immediately hears the song of the Ood in his head, but Donna can't oh. hear it. And so they head down to the basement, and there's a bunch of Ood locked up in a cage. And these are natural-born Ood, unprocessed and not adapted to slavery. They don't have their translator. And the doctor they have is even more years. horrifying. Yeah, but before that, Donna's Donna says, "I can't hear the song. Do you want to hear it?" Yeah. And so the doctor does touches her temples, does a little telepathic thing, and she can hear the song of captivity. And she immediately starts weeping and says, "Take it away, take it away. I don't want to hear it. I I can't bear to hear it." Which it's like a symbol of Donna. Embrace like coming to terms with the fucking oppression of the Ood and what's been done to them, in a way. Isn't it like called yeah. the 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 song of capture, the song of captivity. Yeah. Yeah, song of captivity. Yeah, song of... She's being confronted with the weight, with the sins and weight of what humanity have done to the Ood, and she can't fucking bear it. It gets even better though. Of... What they have done, it's what they will do. This well, is still her future. It, it yeah. gets even sadder, though, because um, she can no longer hear it, and then she just looks at the Doctor, and she realises, oh my god, you can still hear it. All the time. And that makes her and... sad, even even sadder than before. And, and this isn't like Solana, where she's turning a blind eye to the suffering. She isn't. It's just she that just... She, she literally cannot take hearing it. You know, it's like that, that sad song that, that apparently induced people to commit suicide. God. But uh, also, deal. I'm I'm starting to interrupt like this. But um, do you remember uh, at the beginning of this, uh, Rainiac, where you said that the, they're actually in snow and not ash or anything like that? Yeah. This um this episode was filmed in August. Right. Using so, fake snow. Oh yeah, because it gets stuck to the camera lens at one point. Oh my gosh. And you can Apparently, see it. Apparently, they just use tiny pieces of paper. Yeah, and you can see it gets stuck to the camera lens at one point. Wild. But yeah, in in the continuity of the show, it's the first time in a long time the Doctor has encountered real snow. I know. I, I just thought that after all the horrible stuff, we we need just a little bit of levity. Yeah, because we're okay. it's about to get even worse. So um, anyway, yeah. some more horrible stuff. So the ood, these natural ood have secondary brains and they hold them in their own hands kind of like the translator balls but instead it's like a natural actual fucking bright little brain a hind brain that they hold in their own hand and the doctor says that these brains handle memory and emotion so basically humanity in the year 4126 are lobotomizing the ood by cutting off these brains replacing it with a translator ball so they speak english and enslaving them. So that's why they have no concept of freedom. Yeah. And all of these people, and, you know, over time they've deluded themselves enough over like the 200 years to be like, oh, the Uter natural servants. Oh, they die without humanity being there to help them. Now cut off the brains and make them serve us. And honestly, all this gets to Donna so badly that she's just like, it, it doesn't matter where I go, there's still going to be all this hardship and horrors, and I just want to go home. Yeah, she wants to leave. Really sad. Again, this so, is why uh, this was supposed to be the, the second episode and not the third, but it works as the third equally well. Yeah, so the guards and all come in, come in to, they finally track down the doctor, because, well, he, he did a, a thing with the Sonic to lock the door behind him, but they, they broke through with, like, bolt cutters. Uh, and so as they come in, the doctor locks himself in the cage and is like, yeah, ah, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> yeah? For, can, can I read this verbatim from Tardis Wiki? Because yeah, they okay. put it really okay, funny. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <clears throat> Colpin arrives with security. With his usually cheeky bravado, the doctor asks, what are you going to do? Lock me up? Well, you're too late, huh? This doesn't work. <laughs> No, it's arresting it doesn't, but the, and hard cut to the doctor being handcuffed and arrested. But the scene, <laughs> the scene is great because, again, we've we've said that David Tennant is, is the doctor too much in the modern day, and it, you know what he is. 
Yeah. Don't take away from the fact that David Tennant is a really good doctor. I mean, yeah. That's why he keeps coming back because he's good. He just I mean, in the no- he just in nailed the his, he his interpretation of the character and, and this bit where he's like, uh, "What are you doing? Lock me up? You're too late." And he just sticks his tongue out <laughs> like that small motor train. Like, and unfortunately, it's not the fact that he's such a good doctor. It's the fact that you know so many people came in during his run that the BBC was like nostalgia. He's just yeah. It's not so much that he's a really good doctor. It's that he's the most popular doctor. But he is a really good doctor yeah. too. He brings in the fangirls. Yeah. I'm not going to have any I mean, detent slander here. He is a really good doctor in his own right. He's a good doctor. Uh, you he he's a good doctor. But he had his run, and please, for the love of God, make new stories instead of bringing him back to pander to me, remembering how good of a doctor I didn't he say is. bring him back. And then the BBC come in, and they bring out their ultimate weapon to fire so many David Tennants. It's a fangirl-powered cannon. God damn it, cat. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll never help, get that. Help still the best. Get... Halpern gets some bullshit here where he's like, oh, the Ood were just animals on the ice before humanity came along and helped them. And the Doctor and Donner are both like, you can't hear them, you idiot. Well, they welcomed us. They didn't put up a fight. And Donna, fucking Donna's oh, like, Donna. you, Claude. They're born with their brains in their hands. That makes them peaceful because they'd have to trust anybody if they're like that. And the Duchess oh. goes, well done. <laughs> and then Halpern says an interesting line, which I would like to quote verbatim from the uh, Doctor Who transcript, if I may. Please do. Also, I love, I love David Tennant's reaction to her, her saying that. He looks impressed and just goes, oh, is it nice one or well done? Like, nice one. Yeah. So Halpern in reply to this says, and I quote, the system's worked for 200 years. All we've got is a rogue batch. Which, hmm, it almost sounds like Halpern, one of the antagonists of the speech, is t- saying that the system isn't the problem. It is Kablam. <laughs> Remember what you were saying it about the yeah. cat? The system is what's working. Obviously, it's the humans that are the problem. But not me, because I saved the Ood. They were just helpless little people who didn't put up a fight and let us enslave them. No, no, but still, but it's not the system that's the problem. No! Like, holy shit. Fucking Chibnall era. Just I'm okay. I mean, it's a touch. Okay. No, it's the Ood that are wrong. What? Am I out of touch? No, it's you that are wrong. I'm guessing neither of you heard that. Say again. Didn't hear that. I fell out of my chair. Oh god. Oh, my god. I'm fine. I'm, I'm okay. glad you're okay. I, I didn't hear anyone falling out of the chair. I didn't hear any sounds. So I, I screamed so that, and I started with being like, "I'm sorry, I'm okay." Oh, the screen didn't get picked up. On. The, the screen didn't come I, come through the microphone. Yeah, I didn't. No, I, didn't I figured. Hear yeah. I figured I'm fine. Pretty much my chair went backwards and I didn't. Oh god. Well, and... um I'm glad you're okay and I wasn't ignoring <laughs> it. I, I I did not hear you scream. Neither did I. No, 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 it's fine. I figured you guys had it, but it's like uh I, I just need a moment to be able to get up and make sure I'm okay. If I had heard you scream, I would have so... even stopped things and gone, Oh my, my god, cat, you all right. So you guys you guys continue on, give me like half a second. It's fine. So um it's... It's this... a funny. It's funny that I I meant that thing. Oh hey, Kerblam, this is the problem. And it's like, oh, I, I'm gonna metaphorically say since you're okay. It was so wild the cat fell out of her chair and Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can make that joke because you're fine. And then we get a reference that makes me cringe because I lived through this. Oh god. Um, oh yeah. This... Halpin's gonna oh. guess the Ood. The doctor finds yeah. out about this. And he says, so now what? You're going to guess the livestock and move on. And Halpern says, no, he, well, classic foot and mouth strategy. It works. No, well, the doctor doesn't call them livestock. The doctor just, because uh, I got the country. You're going to gas them? And Halpern requires, kill the livestock. You know, 
He's seeing these fucking sentient creatures as cattle. Yeah, but he's 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 referring to foot and mouth disease, which I have lived through. Yeah, that that was a thing. That was in like that was a thing in Britain in the nineties, wasn't it? It was, yes. And BS BSJ, I think it's called as well. That was another kind of infection that they had, and and uh, it, it led to huge amounts of cattle being culled. Is foot is is foot and mouth the same as mad cow, or is it two different? Yeah, I think BSJ is mad cow disease. Okay. And foot and mouth is um. Isn't foot and mouth disease just when you say something stupid? No, that's foot in mouth disorder. Foot and mouth. Foot and I'm mouth thinking. is not anything to be joking about. Oh. So um. Uh. Yeah. So that. Very, very awkward references to real life things here, and yeah. um, Alpern also talked about sterilizing the infection, which I mean, at, at, I mean, he's saying this as he's about to uh, gas the ood. So remember how I said his uh, first name is very close to Clan Man. Yeah, yeah, that's it. just just saying. And and Kess has started the uh, the process of, of getting the U. They've got two hundred uh, cycles to get out of there before the gas goes off and kills everything, in in uh, in the vicinity. And then the Ood in the cage is the natural born Ood that haven't been processed yet. They join hands. And uh, oh they form a circle, and the song that Donna could hear and the, and the Doctor could always hear starts getting louder. It starts intensifying. My God, they joined hands. It's the Symphigear strategy. And all the... Trust you to ruin this moment with Symphigear reference. How do you cancel somebody else's internet? <laughs> <laughs> Love you too, Cat. <laughs> and, uh... God damn it, that's completely ruined the moment. Um, the the Ood that have been processed, the Tame Ood, start being in terrible pain and clutching their heads and this is going on um, inside the cages it's going on in the uh, in the in the room that Solanus would turn to to uh, you know get the, the Ood to be sold to the reps it's happening in the snow it's happening everywhere basically but Ood Sigma is not affected he's just standing there completely okay so uh yeah and Solana is trying to be diplomatic and get the businessmen out, and they're like, oh, we're, we're having drinks and having fun. <laughs> what we Solana tries to get the Ood to leave, but it's too late. They start going wild and start just electrocuting these fucking people. Yes, and they Solana do. runs, and Solana runs out, and th this again is telling of uh, where she stands. She runs out. And it's pandemonium everywhere. Ood are trying to kill the guards. All the guards are like shooting. And one guard runs up to Solana and says, They've gone insane, miss. They've gone mad. And Solana says, Shoot them. Shoot to kill. Turns the corner and zap. Yeah. So. Derped. She gets what she deserved. And if, if she'd been with the doctor, she'd have lived. Yeah. Yep. And I mean, she made her choice in the end. She was just like, she didn't. She saw them killing people and said, "Murder them! Murder them! Oh, they deserve to die because they're killing actual people." I remember being Honestly, a bit surprised. Honestly, it also goes to show what willful ignorance can mean for you. Just because you're ignoring the problem doesn't mean that the problem can't, you know, be there and get bigger. Yeah. Hi, everybody who doesn't believe in global warming. Yeah. Yeah. Mood. So this is as writer says. As he comes out to see the chaos. This is a fucking revolution. I mean, it's really not, nah, but okay. I mean... Can I also point out that Solana's death when I was watching this in 2008, the first time it aired, I was a little surprised by this. I kind mm -hmm. of figured she was going to be the one to sort of um, relent and redeem, ultimately redeem herself. And no, she just gets no. killed off by a, by a nude. But watching back, yeah, of course she was going to. Her car was marked the second she told the guards where the doctor was. Because the, exactly. the look that the doctor gives her before he, he walks off with Donna to avoid the guards is so good. It's and just like disappointment. Then, it's not even anger. And then we have to deal with the uh, with the Mr. Katz. Oh, now this is poetic. Oh my god. Because like, he's, he's there. On, on some level, you feel bad, like punching the air like ah he got what he deserved on another level 
This character fucking got what he deserved. I mean, the, the antagonists are written very well in this story. Yeah. yeah. Because they listen to response when they get what happens to them happen. And uh, in Kess's case, it is very poetic justice because he's just set the gas. He's got his gas mask. He's like, I'm going to be fine while you guys die. Ha <laughs> ha. Then the, the container bursts open. Out come an absolute bajillion ood, red eye ood. And you think, okay, he's going to get zapped. But the camera cuts away. So what? Did he get zapped off camera? Oh no. The next time we see Kess, he's on the other side of the bars. The ood walk away. And one just casually drops his gas mask behind him. So he can see it, he can't reach it, and the gas goes off. And that's the end of Cass. Jesus Christ. God, Doctor Who. Honestly, deserved. I mean, yes, but also, good God. Oh, yeah. This This is one of those things where it's like, there is a fine line between deserved and horrible. And this is one of those episodes that definitely teeters on the line where it is horrible what's happening to these people. One of them, you know, gets transformed. One of them is gassed. Several of them get, like, electrocuted. But then there's also the opposite side where it's one of them is this racist asshole who decides to use his wealth as a sort of shield for himself. One of them turns an ignorant eye to, you know, all the horrors that are going on. One of them is just a sadist. One of them's a goddamn psychopath, exactly. And it, it's just... It, it's the weird balance that humanity takes. It's the... Not to get political, even though, you know, this is Doctor Who and it's very political, just saying. Uh, but not to get too political, but it's the same idea as the death penalty. There are plenty of people who want it because they think that people who commit these horrible crimes should be punished. And they feel like the best punishment is death. And then there are the other people who think that the best punishment is having to continue to live with their crimes. Mm. So there's a there's nuanced debate to be had there, indeed. Yeah. So uh, we're not so, going to get into it. There's good points to each side. Blah blah blah. Whatever. But in the case of Cass, I feel like I mean, you almost feel like you're a uh, fucking can't judge if it's deserved or not. It's like it's up to the ood. The oppressed people rising up to yeah. deal with their oppressors. Which they do. If it's just or not. Isn't it? They do in spectacular fashion. Yeah. So, since all this is happening, Halpern is just saying, well, th- there is going to be a full investigation of this, Doctor, so I can't just shoot you. So I'll leave you both to the mercy of the ood. <laughs> What's the great line? In- i I I mean I'm I'm sorry but you're still leaving them handcuffed to a pole. You really think that the Ood are going to unhandcuff them after they've killed them? Yeah. Saying? True. I mean, he's rich. He thinks he can get away with He gets a great line as he's leaving goes, "Enjoy your Ood." Yeah. T- Tim McKinry gives a great performance here. Also, side note, my butt really hurts. <laughs> I mean, I'm fine, but it just you, really you hurts. You fell out of a chair. That's kind of that's kind of um, part of the cause, I'm afraid. I know, but well, today is not a good just, day for me. Just before just before he leaves, uh, the doctor's like, "Hang on, a creature like the Ood couldn't survive with two halves of his brain separated." Well, there must be something else. There is, and Halpern's leaving to blow it up. It won't exist for very much longer. <laughs> but as he heads out, he does like. Perhaps the one bit of humanity Halpern shows in this, not to give this fucker any credit, but he lets Ood Sigma go to be with his people. Because he was loyal to the end. Mm. Go go be with your people while you still can. <laughs> I mean, he's still going to blow up the thing and it, then all the Ood are going to die. Including so, Sigma. So I mean, he sees it as a kindness, but actually... I, I know, he, still. It isn't. <laughs> Again, again, it's like Solana telling the doctor where uh, the thing is before calling the guards on him. It's a, it's a good thing that I did that lets me sleep at night. Well, he's not going to be doing much sleeping except with the fishes. Well, <laughs> we'll get to that. Oh my God! Let's let's so, get to the 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 real 
denouement then of this whole episode. Oh, the, so they um, threw an advance on the Doctor and Donna, and they proclaimed the Doc. We're Doctor Donna friends. Doctor I, Donna I love the friends. scene. I love the lieutenant gets where he's trying to break out. He goes, "These are really good handcuffs." And then Donna's like, "Oh, great quality." <laughs> He's like, well, don't you haven't you met Houdini or something? Don't you know how to get out of handcuffs? That's the story these we need to really, see. These are really good handcuffs. So yeah, the you were advancing on them. The doctor saying, Doctor Donna, friends, Doctor Donna, friends. Donna's well, the saying, doctor's the saying that, but the but the Donna's going. The circle must be broken. And eventually, the uh, unprocessed suit in the cage, like telepathically, you hear them saying it, and so they call off these ood. And they're just like, okay, Dr. Donna, friends, how can we help? Because they did try to help them earlier. So, Halpern and Ryder, meanwhile, are down in Warehouse 15, and they're setting uh, explosive charges to blow up whatever the fuck is down there. This reveal, oh like, my god. Well, we'll get to the reveal. He's basically like, we're going to blow up this thing, Ryder. If this thing dies, so do the Ood. And the Doctor and Donna escape. They're running through the fucking pandemonium. They get into Warehouse 15. And they see the thing. It's a giant fucking Ood brain. Only I have the brains to rule the Ood sphere. God damn it. Come on, it's a giant brain. <laughs> yeah, I know, I knew you were gonna. Yeah, this is the telepathic center of the Ood. Hive mind sort of thing, I guess. That would guide them. But uh they but Halpern says that they found the brain centuries ago beneath a glacier. And they have a giant, a, a big electrical telepathic dampening field all around it. This is the circle that must be broken because it's been stopping the Ood from connecting to it for 200 years. And so Halpern is like, ha, ah, well, I'll blow this place up and I'll start again in cargo or something. Ha 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 get up, you'll all be dead. I, I love the line he gets when he, he opens the, the uh, arms cabinet to get the mines out. Yeah. We're gonna blow it up. The way he delivers that line is just so good. <laughs> T Tim McKinnery has played it. This is a, this is not an insult. This is a, this is a uh, supposed to be a, a a compliment to his talent as an actor. Tim McKinnery is really good at playing slime balls. Yeah, I mean, some people just have that type, you know. Yeah. Blackadder, oh. and now this. He's just really good at playing scumbags. But then Ryder steps up, and it turns out, ah, I, I lowered the barrier to its minimum. I caused the pandemonium. And why did he do this? I'm one of the friends of the Ood, which we haven't actually mentioned. This yeah, the okay. friends of the Ood were brought up briefly by um, Rose in yep. the Impossible Planet. Huh. Of course, she's talking about, you know, you know, there's the slaves. Don't they have any? Oh, are you one of the friends of the Ood? Uh -huh. So that this, um, I suppose, are like friends of the Earth. Fucking like the Greenpeace. Or Greenpeace, yeah. Or I Where's can't believe like... I to mention this Extinction Rebellion. I was just oh, thinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but also the fact that, uh, you know, it, it's sort of treated like a joke. It's like, oh wow, they're friends of the Ood fighting for Ood rights. Oh, how fucking, you know, it's kind of like how the right would criticize people fighting for like like how how, how to put it uh, friend of the Ood. like how the uh how the right uh disparages black lives matter so you you know yeah. how i said that you you think when you first watched that solana's going to be the one that redeems herself ultimately no because it turns out that one of the oppressors is not well dr right has been trying to help but he still get he still gets it because Halpern throws him off. Oh my god! Yeah, this balcony, and he collapses in the brain and just sort of slurps him up. He gets he gets suffocated by the brain. Yikes! He's assimilated. Essentially, oh essentially he is. And so, just as Halpern can I can I mention something about the, uh, Doctor Ryder? Two yeah. things. Yeah. Firstly, yeah. That, the dive he takes into the brain over the rail. Mm -hmm. The actor did that in one take. Yep. Oh, the actor insisted on doing it himself, not a stunt person, and he nailed it in one take, so props to him for that. Nice job. And secondly, did you recognize him at all? No. No. Then, then you've not watched Harry Potter because. 
Oh, you mean Harry Potter, Harry Potter. by Hatsune Miku? He's, um, he's Adrian Rawlins. He's James Potter. I see. Oh. He's Harry Potter's father. Shit. He got cute. He's a good well, he actor. He is cute. He just has really horrible uh, He's a he's a good actor. On. Adrian Rawlins is a, is a good actor. He's been in a lot of things. But he's he's gone now. He's been absorbed by the brain. Huh. And uh, okay, this, this I know you you mentioned it at the end of last week. You're like, oh my god, good says, oh. god. <laughs> okay, so Sigma shows up in down here and offers help from his hair tonic. Would you like a drink, sir? And Halpern is, like, acting weird. He's, like, he's not quite himself. But then he manages, as Uch Sigma offers the hair tonic, Did you poison me? Yes. The doctor asks, what is that stuff? And Uch Sigma says, Oh, it's Ood graft in biological compound. And the doctor's like, Oh, dearie me! Uh-oh! It was at this point he knew he fucked up. Yeah, he fucked up. <laughs> but, yeah, it's mentioned that the Ood brain reached out when the barrier was lowered. And, you know, put anger and rage in the red eye Ood. But with Ood Sigma, it was patience, intelligence, and mercy. And Halpern has been prepared and is standing right next to the Ood brain, and he can hear the song. Call this mercy? This is very much not a mercy. <laughs> oh no, this is a hey, hey, you know what we were saying about how they were, how, you know how you were saying about Solana? How she was afraid that the Ood, if they were given any sort of independence, would turn, would oppress them? Hey, what happens to Halpern? Uh, absolutely none of that. What happens to Halpern is one of the most horrifying things I've seen on the on the modern Doctor Who. Go ahead. Man. What happens to him is the fact that they tried to make this worse, but they thought it would be too scary, so they made it this. And it's still too scary, in my opinion. If, if this is the version that was censored because the other one was too scary, what the hell did the first one look like? Oh, man. I know. He literally rips his scalp off. Yeah. What he, the fuck? He isn't just losing his hair anymore. He... Puts his hands on his brain. He's like, what have you done to me? What have you done to me? And pulls and his scalp get, peels away to reveal a pulsating brain. But not a human brain. Well, it doesn't reveal a brain. It reveals it, what I can best describe as a new scalp. It looks like a brain, but yeah. Uh, on, honestly, to me, it looks more like an actual, you know, like the skull. A boiled egg. Yeah. It looks like the top, top section of a boiled egg. <laughs> And then tentacles start coming out of his mouth. And then... Hey, Hal Doctor Who, thanks for my nightmare. Halpern looks up... I'm going to be very careful when I do the screencast for this because I, I can't show this too graphically. But Halpern just looks up. He's become a nude. In a business suit. And it's not even over. He's Because he's, his... Human voice is going away. He sort of wails a little bit. He sneezes and out pops his brain. It's, which he catches exactly. on instinct. And he's just the most pathetic looking creature. And Donna is, to her credit, Donna is absolutely horrified by this. And the doctor's like, yes! Because oh, like, Donna's like, being anymore. with you, I can't tell what's right and what's wrong anymore. It's better that way, trust me. They turned him into an ood. They turned him they into one of their own. But they're not going to kill oppressor, him. The oppressor, the oppressor has become what he would have oppressed. It's even more chilling than that, though. Because... I mean, it's not chilling. It's almost... Uh... The basic point is that um, ood, he's Sigma, right? So I don't yeah. get that mixed ood up. Ood Sigma, yeah. Ood Sigma turns to the doctor and says, don't worry, we will take care of him. They don't intend to murder him or treat him badly. They intend to keep taking care of him like he's one of their own, which he now is. They intend to show him kindness. Which is actually perhaps the cruelest thing they could do of all to him. 
that's I mean that is, I mean to them I mean to them of course they are showing kindness but to him it's like oh come on he 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 was a, he was a big shot businessman, and now he's a nude. Oh my! I'm the thing. I was so I'm no better than the cow now. I'm livestock. He's he's one of the. It's even worse than that. He's one of the you. He's he's one of a hive race, and his well being and his survival now depends on them. Yep. It's like I can definitely see some semblance of horror in this, especially since he's now lo- losing his autonomy. Some but I semblance can also of horror. See... <laughs> but I can also see how, while they're getting their, you know, while he's getting his just desserts and becoming the very thing that he, you know, tried to oppress, there's also almost a sense of maybe weirdly beauty to it. In a way, where they're not trying to get back at him for everything he's done, they're trying to teach him to be better. I, I suppose that's one way you can you interpret it. Again, well, like, like like Kess, it's poetic justice. But I do like yeah. You you mentioned the thing where Don says she doesn't can't tell what's right or wrong anymore. This, but the full line the doctor says it's maybe it's better that way. People who know for sure. Or like Mr. Halpern. This this is on point. This this entire episode scripting is on but point, isn't it? The doctor asks Ut Sigma if he can do the honors of breaking the circle. Ut Sigma gives him the honor. The doctor lowers the uh, telepathic field, and the song resonates out. And all the guards are clearly affected because they put down their guns as it sings out, and the guards and the Ut stop trying to kill each other. And we find out that the song resonated across all the galaxies, so everyone heard it. So maybe things will be better for the Ood now. And all the and all the Ood can come home to the Ood Spear. They're free now. And then someone else comes along and enslaves them all. Thankfully, that doesn't happen. Doesn't. No. The next no, time we see the Ood Spear, it, it... they are very much still a free race. Yeah. It, it just kind of reminded me a little bit of, like, the neutral race from Futurama. Oh, God. Mm-hmm. Or, no neutralness! Um... It's a beige alert! If I don't survive, tell my wife hello. <laughs> so, I think that's pretty much plan of the Ood, yeah? It yeah. is. and But not before we get the big foreshadowing. Oh, God. We, we have to mention it, because it, it's part of the episode. Well, yes. So the the, the call's gone out across the galaxy, and uh, Usimon actually gives him off and says, "You know, you can stay. There's place, there's space in the song for you two." He goes, "Oh, I've I've kind of got my own song to be getting on with. I think your song must end soon. Why'd you say that? Every song must end." Dun, dun, dun. And of course, Usimon is a part of the um, of the final arc of David Tennant's Doctor. Also, may I remind everybody that they keep calling them Dr. Donna. Not oh, yes. two words, one. Oh, yeah. That's, that's our our children will sing of the Dr. Donna and their children's children. That becomes relevant near the end of season four, but yeah. Yeah, because. If I may wiggle my eyebrows appropriately. <laughs> okay, so member from Bewitched. <laughs> Da, 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 da. Uh, final thoughts? Yeah, who wants to go first? Not I don't mind me. who goes first. You know I'm going to have a lot to say. So you, you want to go last because it was your pick? Yeah, I'll go last. I mean, holy shit. All right, Kat, you fell out of the chair. Ladies first. Oh, thank you. Um, Doctor Who is one of those weird shows that... You know, obviously, it's meant to be, I, I don't know, I wouldn't say it's for kids, because there's all sorts of weird shit that happens in it, but it's meant to be a family show that everybody can gather around and watch and enjoy, and, you know, they do have their, you know, their stupid episodes, like Love and Monsters, where just stuff happens, or maybe they'll have interesting episodes where you kind of have to think about things, and then they have episodes like this. Where they're quite blatantly telling you something. And what they're blatantly blatantly telling people is, 
stop turning a blind eye to things. You can't coast by on ignorance. All you can do is face the problems before they get even bigger or out of control and try to do something about them now. And they're saying it in a way that not only works within the confines of the story, but also isn't blatantly in your face, Chibnall. And that's what I think a good episode of Doctor Who is. It's something that will still continue to teach you, like the original show was, while also giving you entertainment. It's food for thought, but also, you know, entertainment. And those are what I consider to be some of the best things in the world. So for Planet of the Ood, it does have its really hard moments. It has these moments where, you know, like we said, there was the black uh, security guard who decided to start whipping one of the Ood for not getting up. That has a lot of significance behind it. They tried to, you know, put a little bit of humor in it, but that humor still has an underlying tone of horror to it. They don't shy away from what they're trying to say, Chibnall. They put it straight in your face and they tell you, look at it. Look at it and understand what it is that you're seeing here. And honestly, I love this story. This is a fantastic story. One that I would definitely watch again. And one that I would definitely show to other people to be like, hey, you want to see a really good episode of of David Tennant's Doctor Who? Here's one of them. Of course, after midnight, that is. Ring, go ahead. Okay, so I really enjoy this one. But good, sweet, merciful crap, this is horrific. And I don't mean that like, oh, it's bad. I mean, I mean, the, some of the, the themes, some of the scenes that happen in this are absolutely horrific. But they have to be. Because as Kat said, the whole idea of the message is, you know, don't turn a blind eye. In order to not turn a blind eye, you have to be woken up to it, and you have to be woken up to it by things that are very unpleasant. And yeah, it is unpleasant, but they are necessary. So I cannot understand why this is not treated as more of a classic by David Tennant fans. This doesn't come up in like David Tennant's best episodes very often. It should. Hey, Rain, want to know where it is on the poll? No, but you're going to tell oh, me. God. 125th. As I said... Just, for some reason, just, it... un- just under, for reference, just below Rise of the Cybermen slash The Age of Steel, uh, Planet of the Daleks, which is a third Doctor story that I consider boring as piss, uh, Image of the Fendal, a pretty good fourth Doctor story, Castro Valva, uh, The Bells of St. John, and interestingly, Hyde at 119th place, six points above this. I mean, I really enjoyed Hyde, range. but is it better than this? No. No, I wouldn't. I mean, I know that's subjective, but for me personally, it's not. It's not. But may I continue? So yes, the the acting is terrific throughout, and the fact that we, you know, really latched on to these comeuppances that these characters were getting. You know, Solana gets electrocuted, Kes gets gassed, Halpin gets turned into an Ood himself. The fact that we, you know, those resonated with us so much. It's testament to how good characters they are. I, I mean, good in terms of well written, not good in terms of good, because they're the antagonists for a reason. The only good one of the antagonists is Doctor Ryder, and he still dies. He doesn't get his just desserts, but he does get killed because of his efforts. Even though he's trying to help, and ultimately he does help to bring about the freedom of the Ood. But he doesn't get to live to enjoy that. He gets thrown to a giant brain and suffocated. Also, MVP, Catherine Tate. Yes. She just nails the character of Donna anyway, but here she is so good. She goes from being slightly ignorant to horrified to angry. And the, the when she snaps back at Halpin and, and, you know, the doctor like, looks at her and goes, well done. That's an amazing moment for Donna. And it happened in her third story, which was supposed to be her second story, as a full-time companion. And I'll just mention that this story was supposed to be quite a bit different when it was originally first penned. First um, suggested. So we mentioned Impossible Planet Satan Pit. 
one of the characters from that story was going to come back. Ida. Ida was going to come back. I don't remember Ida. Well, if we ever do Satan, Pla Satan Pit and the Impossible Planet, you will. But um, she's one of the survivors of that story. She um, she gets to do some fun things with uh, with the Doctor and then has a rather harrowing ordeal because of it. But she survives. She was going to come back. She was going to investigate the um, Ood operations undercover and find to her horror that her father was running it. Ooh. Morris. But at the end of it, it turns out her father is actually a friend of the Ood. Oh. So I think what they did is they took Ida Scott's father's character and split him into Dr. Ryder and Halpern. I think that's sense. what they did. And would it have been a better story if they'd done that? I don't know. It's one of those what-if scenarios, isn't it, that you'll never know because it never got made. Yeah. I wouldn't have minded Ida coming back as long as she, you know, wasn't just brought back to kill off. But, um, no. This is what we actually got and it's it's fantastic. Can't recommend it enough, but it will be an uncomfortable watch, and that's not a bad thing. So, if you have watched this show for any amount of time, you should know my stance on this by now. I absolutely fucking vibe with Planet of the Ood. So, I've made a lot of the whole Remember 2008 when the show was good, the Chris Chibnall slash BBC Endless parade of reminding us that David Tennant existed. I don't like that. But, like, this is the kind of shit they should be doing. This is what we should be taking back from the David Tennant era. Not, oh, look, Gallifrey's destroyed, and there's Jadoon back. It's, oh, look, the raw political energy of the Russell T. Davies era angrily saying something that matters to the fucking world. Like I mean, to be said. fair, they did try to do this. It's just it was kablam and it was bad. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the Chibnall era in, in a nutshell, isn't it? A cheap, yeah. like, Walmart brand copy of episodes from 2008. Because kablam is just, you know, it doesn't get it at all. But Planet of the Ood fucking gets it. It is just angrily about not turning a blind eye to oppression. It is about exploring the horrible, horrible nature of what is being done to the Ood and watching them rise up and liberate themselves from their oppressors. Watching their oppressors rationalize with themselves, saying, oh, we're doing the Ood. No, we're not the bad people. We can sleep at night. And just getting put up against the wall for their hubris and their the latent sadism that can run underneath with characters like Kess and Halpern it is just a fucking whammy of a story. Uncomfortable, yes, at times. I mean, look what, look at the imagery you got, but politically relevant and on fucking point, even 14 years later. It's sadly. definitely, yeah, sadly. I mean, it's definitely a highlight of the David Tennant era, and it's saying things that should be said. And everyone in it performs admirably. The antagonists play sufficiently, varying levels of evil, over-the-top, like, unhinged hamminess, or like that, or just like rationalizing themselves that, no, I'm doing the right thing, even though they're doing the wrong thing. And we have David Tennant and Catherine Tate doing well. This is just it's just Doctor Who that I vibe with, you know? That punchy sort of political thing that says something about the world and the state we live in. This is the kind of shit I vibe with, and it's very me, and I really enjoyed rewatching Planet of the Ood. So, uh, what are we doing now? Well, before we get to Cat's Pick, oh. Gallifrey 1. Oh boy. Because there is yeah, a quite uh, staggering Moira. piece of information that's come out of Gallifrey 1. I, I have a question. What the heck is that? It's a, it's a, it's a, a Comic Con. A Con. Doctor Who convention. That's convention. Happened yeah. this week. It happened this weekend. Oh. It is still happening as a recording. Oh. Happened. But, uh, Never heard yeah. of it. It's a pretty big um, Doctor Who fan convention and. Um, Joe Obviously Martin's not there. That big. Joe Martin's there. Sasha Dewan's there. Mandit Gill's there. there. Yeah, that's 
Uh, so yeah, some but... some pieces of information coming out of that. Firstly, Session Two One wants to still be the master when RTD takes over. To which I say yes. Good. He, he, I mean, look, the uh, whole ignoring Missy's redemption thing aside, he, yeah, he's played. He plays well. And you know that RTD too. can write the Dwarf Master perfectly. You just know it. I mean, I mean, he won't put him in a fucking can. Nazi costume. That's what I mean. Oh Jesus Christ. Still bad about that. I mean, you should be because that's fucking appalling. That is awful. Yes. Um, so that's Being the first my bit of shattered ass. <laughs> I'm sorry about your shattered ass, but um. <laughs> uh, far more interesting, I think, Raynek is the panel with uh, Matt Strevens. I think I'm saying that right. The uh, producer. Is this the, 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 the absolutely mind-boggling thing? Is is admitted to? Uh, yeah, I think we should mention it, given our uh, Eve of the Daleks podcast, mm -hmm. where we, we railed left and right about, so, oh my god, this fucking you, Yaz you, you know how ship. You know how this Yaz doctor relationship, you know, the ship named Thasmin was kind of latched onto by the fans, like, at a rabid yeah. level, and, and like, we need Thasmin, give us Thasmin officially, and we finally got it, in the worst possible way, in Eve of the Daleks. Like, well. And like two and a half episodes before the goddamn era's out. Turns out there's a reason for basically... this uh, being put towards the end of the uh, of the run. Why? It wasn't originally intentional. They forgot! They didn't just forget. They had no idea that there was going to be a ship of the Doctor and Yasmin. <laughs> it was not ever intended to be an official thing and the backlash got so big they made it an official thing and did it in the worst possible way by having the white old white guy out them. Oh, he well, I can say it's better than my theory. And my theory was that Moffat was too chicken to put in the Holmes Watson pairing in his, his Sherlock series. So now he, you know, Chibnall is going to do the brave thing and put in the Yaz Doctor thing in his series. I don't have a problem with, with um, Holmes and, and uh, Watson not being in a relationship like that, but. I mean, well, no, but there, there, there were a lot of fan girls who were very, very disappointed with that. I wouldn't have had a problem if they had <laughs> done that. You understand? That's not, I'm not saying, oh, they shouldn't okay, have done okay. that. Like, yeah, you, you can, yeah, I guess on some level you can criticize that, but also, like, look at fucking Mafia Era Doctor Who. It's queer as shit. And and then the yeah. the, the revelation kept coming because uh, we can't do this one already. Originally, it was penned that there were going to be two specials with Jody before she regenerated, not three. So Legend of the Sea Devils was meant to be her finale. Oh dear God. What? Yeah. The next episode, the East, I, I assume the Easter special, the Chinese Pirates and the Sea Devils was going to be the episode where she regenerated. So this could, so the whole Thasman thing could have been even less fucking developed. It's not going to even be mentioned, is it? It's like, well, we've we've fed him. Now, now we don't have to mention it ever again. Hey, oh, look at that. You it makes me very shit. concerned where the, the actual ending, official ending, is going to go for the 13th I mean, Doctor. I mean, I'm, I'm, very, I'm like, I have a, a very, very worrying barrier gaze thing involving Yaz now. It could happen. I know what's going to happen. Chibnall. What's going to happen is... The Doctor and Yaz will never confess their feelings, but for some reason, the Doctor would get her hand chopped off, and then that hand would turn into an all-new Doctor, and then that fake Doctor and Yaz would go off to an alternate dimension in order to be together. That would be better than what I think is actually going to happen. Too bad that the show has never done anything like that before, am I right? I actually, yeah, and then the, I actually think Yaz is going to die. Good. I think Yaz is going to die in the, in the Sea Devil episode. Well, I mean, yeah. Because that would be the shocking that's... thing. Oh, does she, she make it to the finale? No, she's gone. And, that's, yeah. and that spurs the Doctor to do something terrible, and therefore she has to regenerate because she has, you know, gone against the name of the Doctor. Are you tell Are you telling me that we could get a fucking Chibnall version of Hellbent? You know we could get a Time Lord Victorious version. No! I refuse. No. <laughs> Again, no. I'm not saying I want this to happen, but, but I could see it happening. 
Oh, and the thirteenth doctor sacrifices her life so that Yaz may live, and that's how the thirteenth doctor turns it into could be. the fourteenth doctor. It could be. And that's, and that's how Jodie Whittaker turns into David Tennant. And just for good oh. measure, just for good measure, doing that wipes Yaz's memories. Yeah. Oh no, I don't. My memories wipe, but it's the only way. It has to be this way because the laws of time. You're says... gonna die if I don't do this. You have to do this. I promised Don I'm in Yaz. Oh it ha God. it has to be the way. If you if I you know all of our suggestions are, are just everything from David. If Tennant you or... die, you won't have your memories. What? Anyway. To, 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 to end the Gallifrey Tennant. one conversation on a on a on a somewhat of a high note, there was a quite brilliant uh, trailer revealed for um, a big finish uh, audio series. The Gallifrey Time War uh, series continues, and, and Gallifrey has been a really good series for them. Uh, I can't say anything that happens in later episodes because of spoilers, but I'll just say that the series contains the likes of Romana, an original character called uh, Narvin, who works with Romana, the Inquisitor from uh, Trial of the Time Lord, until the, until the actress died. Oh, yeah. And well, Lila. I mean... I mean I mean, to be fair, she's a time lady. You could have regenerated. And and Leela is the um, and Leela is is the narrator of this trailer, and it's just really well put together. And was written by someone I've mentioned on this uh, show before, written by Sophie Isles. Neat. She wrote the script for that because she now works with Big Finish. Nice. nice. She's done a couple of stories for them, short stories. One where she got to write for the uh, for the master, the classic nice. master, the Delgado where, or Ainley master. Nice. So that well, ends that. Cat, what have you got for us next week? And should we be afraid? Colin Baker. Uh, Colin Baker. Colin Baker. Well, it's not Colin Baker. I could tell you that much. I don't think that you should be afraid because what we're going to do is something that I know for a fact Frez has not watched. Oh, boy. Oh, I wow. Know I doing. know this is going. All right. Kids. One, it's time for more Australian K9. I knew it. All right, fucking, I'm down with it. <laughs> Join us next time, where at the very least, Rainiac and I will do episodes seven to ten. Brent, you have to watch it all. <laughs> You've <laughs> not seen four, five, or six, have you? I a good fucking reason for not doing it. I might add. No, I, 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 no, I, now you have a reason to do so. I'm not talking about the podcast. I'm, I'm just saying you haven't seen anything beyond episodes one to three, have you? No, I have not. Well, goody, now you get to watch all the episodes. Get I mean, the bounty, hunter, the, 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 the bounty hunter's kind of great, so it, it's within your your while. All right. Yes. With your while. Well, and, uh, and just because of the disconnect, but the way we'll do it is you can just give like your overall thoughts of the first three, and then we'll just go into the, the four that we have to actually do. So you could just say like the bounty hunter is good, diamond series it's okay, fear itself eh you know whatever. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> we'll talk about so join us next time on Doctor Who reviews for episode seven through ten of K nine. In peace, Bob Baker. Yeah. And then next time we'll do Colin Baker. I knew That's it. I, I, I knew it. <laughs> I knew we weren't going away from the Baker forever. Of course she's not. Oh, heavens no. I, by the way, I, I, I haven't got a clue what I'm picking for my next one. I, I, have, an idea for my, I have an idea for my next one. So. I don't have a clue. So I, can, I mean, I, I could pick Colin Baker, but then that would leave you not being able to do Colin Baker. You wow. say that, but I'd still be proud of the fact that you decided to willingly choose Colin Baker. <laughs> Didn't I pick a Colin Baker before? I have no idea. I don't watch this dumbass show. Nobody else does. <laughs> <laughs> Say good night, cat. Hi, cat. Where so, can you find us, lovely people? You can find us, lovely people. I can't believe I got the front of back at, a, at long last. Uh, you can find us, lovely people, on Twitter at Reviews Doctor. Keep it together. There's like two minutes to go, Brett. Come on. Uh, individually. <laughs> 
We're at Radio Active Maniac, at Freezing Inferno, at Concave Usurper. Cat sometimes streams video games at twitch.tv forward slash Concave Usurper. Fresno's um, YouTuber, VTuber Alter Ego sometimes streams video games at twitch.tv forward slash Freezing Inferno. We forgot to mention Speaking of that. By Bet the Unbow by Kristen McTeer. Yeah, spe speaking of the stream thing, uh, by th I'm, I think by the time you have this out, we sh it should still be uh, relevant. But if not, well, we we'll just deal with it. But on February the 24th, weather permitting at, say, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I will do a stream of the Final Fantasy VI Pixel Remaster. So I might dragons. actually be able to make that. Hey, nice. So hop in. You can see my VTuber self play a old video game from 20 years ago and probably talk about Grand Bank and nostalgia and other dumb bullshit and just have a fun time with a game that I like. Hey, question. You said Final Fantasy VI, right? Yes. Is that the one where they suplex the train? Yes, it is. It sure is. Even more reason to watch. It also contains I a mean, second puppet I, I murder mean, clown. I, I might not get to that. I might not get to that part on the stream, but that is indeed a thing that happens in that. It, game. it also contains a second puppet murder clown. Yes, it does. Who is an amazing villain? Yes, he is. You know what else has a psychedelic murder clown? Not K nine. I thought you were going to say the Sarah Jane adventure. I thought no, she, she won't mention that, but. <laughs> I have no idea. Hey, good night. Good, good night. night. Good night. And join us next time. Thank you. Thank you for hearing us talk about uh, Planet the Ood. And join us next time when we delve back into the world of Australian K9, episode 7 to 10. And Cat for one is delighted to 10 about for this. Me. Uh, episodes 4 to 10 for, for Jerry. Because he didn't put in the work last time. I <laughs> keep. <laughs> I, there was a reason for it, but you didn't. It was a very good reason. I know. Yeah. That's why I'm not being too harsh about it. Well, yeah. Honestly, I think this is what we need is just a dumbass kid show so that we can break away a little bit from the politics. I mean, I know what one of the episodes is, so we're not breaking away from the politics. Anyway, join us oh, next time. Know, but you know. <laughs> okay, join us now, next time for okay. Australian K9, episode 7 to I'm 10. I'm now. Until... <laughs> Politics, you say? <laughs> hey, hey, guys! You know, you know what else has interesting geopolitical politics in it? Doctor Who, Sinfagir. Which we might cover. Oh, wow! Look at the time. <laughs> I have so much stuff to do. Oh my god! Can you hear that, Gustav? He's going to the parrot any moat. Well, since I'm apparently the only one here, good night, everybody. See you for the next podcast. Bye for now.